Greetings. This is John Dyke, the CEO of SESME, and I'm thrilled to have with me for our discussion today Federico from MXD. Federico, would you mind just taking a moment to introduce yourself? Hey, yes, absolutely, John. Thanks so much for having me. So uh, I'm Dr. Federico Chamarella. I am the president and CTO at MXD and very excited here to be with you today to talk about interoperability and data. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, truly honored to, to have this conversation with you. I think there's a, a lot of really, really important work that you're doing. And obviously, uh, the, the work that we're doing here at SESME in many ways is, is I think, very synergistic and uh, kind of working in a, in a direct adjacency to the work that you're doing. And I think it's important for, for manufacturers and, and the broader ecosystem here in the U.S. to understand perhaps a little bit more of what we're doing collectively and what it might look like if our organizations uh, were to work together on some important efforts or initiatives around enterprise interoperability. Would you take a few minutes and perhaps share with, with our audience today what uh, MXD is all about and some of the specific areas that, that I, you think are relevant for us to hear? Absolutely, it my pleasure and, and thanks again. So yeah, let me just really quick introduce you to MXD if you're not familiar with us. Uh, we are a sister institute to SESME. We are funded by the DOD. Um, we just uh, a few years back got our second round of funding. Um, and as you can see, we've, we've been funded quite a bit in a lot of different areas, one of which I think is of particular importance that I'll talk about today <clears throat> that has to do with supply chain resiliency through the CARES Act. Um, the other important thing that I think uh, you know we'll probably talk about uh, at some point is really uh, the issue of cybersecurity as well. So as we're talking about all these digital technologies, how do we ensure uh, its security? So as the DOD designate uh, as the National Center for Cybersecurity and Manufacturing, that's another area that I think uh, is great uh, to discuss today. Um, and, and really, the other nice piece, and, and I think where this could uh, go to a good conversation, is the fact that we actually have a, a demonstration floor here uh, located in Chicago. It's a 22,000 square foot kind of factory of the future where we have a lot of different test beds, a way for manufacturers to engage. Um, and this, I think, would be the crux of some of the discussion that we're going to have a, a little bit later. So. What I wanted to highlight was one of the pro projects, as I mentioned, that was funded through the CARES Act, and this has to do with uh, supply chain risk. So we all are very aware of all the problems that, that COVID has brought about with the supply chain and, and saying, you know, all these problems that we have, but many, quite honestly, could have been avoided because we had the data, um, but it was just a matter of trying to understand how we could aggregate this. So. So really what we were trying to do is understand how to get that end-to-end -end supply chain visibility, become more uh, proactive rather than reactive, looking at ways to how can we develop a culture, right? And I think that's something that Sesame is looking at of data sharing, looking at ways to understand that we can work together in these things. So really um, what we wanted to do is take some commercial off-the-shelf software and develop the supply chain uh, mapping uh, risk platform. And so looking at flexibility, looking at ways really to implement AI in a way that could be effective. And as I said, take some of these issues um, in real time and help these manufacturers overcome these problems. Um, so here are some of the participants uh, that uh, are in this project as we speak. So you can see in the top there, Coupa, Software AG, their government solutions, RAD, uh, the Supply Chain Risk Management um, Consortium and Supply Dynamics are really the crux of that core platform. Um, we then uh, are obviously involved ourselves, but as advisors, we have DLA and Dow. And then what's nice is we actually are using manufacturers. So Oshkosh, Dow, DLA, a small company, Geobit and Lockheed are piloting the software so that we're getting real time feedback from them as we um, take this platform out. Um, what I'd like to do next here is show you a quick schematic of the platform, and I'm not going to go through all of, all of this, but just to be no, just to be uh, said is that this is a cloud-based platform that is scalable and extensible to meet manufacturers' current and future supply chain risk management needs, right? Um, and this is really looking at how we can leverage and leading off the shelf solution providers 
to focus on creating a more deployable, commercial platform that helps manufacturers identify and mitigate their risks. And so you can see again how the different um, users are uh, providing or the different providers are using their software to help in the AI piece and the data management piece as we're pulling public data. And again, this is where I think uh, the projects that SESME are working on could be interesting in terms of uh, collaboration. So I think the other pieces that we're talking about here is just understanding how we're looking at this from a granularity of the solution itself. So from the bus basic supply network uh, all the way up to the detailed business constraint uh, rules for this. These are the data that is provided and really what's the functionality received out of there. And again, I'm not gonna read through the details, you can look through those, but I think what's important to understand is you can start doing these what if scenarios and becoming, again, as we said, much more proactive than reactive, um, right? But again, this comes back to data, enterprise and operability, this notion that we're talking about today. Um, and so a platform like this could potentially help in, in those spaces. And so I'm, I'm very excited to see um, both where we go with this project, but uh, as I said, in, in future discussions um, with SESME. So here's a kind of summary. As I said, we're really looking to um, expand this platform in a way that we think that can be very good. So uh, to expand with the defense industrial base by using DLA FLIST and other data. Um, can we connect to other risk factor data sources? Um, how do we expand our AI capabilities in ways that look at the data sources in, in unique manners? Um, targeting additional critical national supply chains and re really trying to leverage that core platform for the additional functionality. Uh, these software providers have a lot of different tools that you know we're not using all of them, uh, again, because we want this to be accessible and affordable, but really, how do we then leverage these other pieces that, that bring us forward in a way that's going to be relevant? Uh, I think finally, to kind of close the loop and why I think this is important, um, as we talked about, we have now a 5G testbed on our factory floor. So we can start looking at IoT devices, right? And so how do we connect these pieces from the factory floor into that supply chain? Uh, we will also be bringing in some mid-band solutions. We have a private millimeter wave from AT&T, as you see there in the top, but we're looking at expanding that to, to mid-band and some Wi-Fi 6. So again, we can really get into some of the details that will be necessary to understand how can 5G play a role in this? And we know that it is going to have a role um, in this as we move forward. So I'm very excited to see, um, you know, and hear more and talk with you, John, today about uh, the work that you're doing and how we can leverage these opportunities to, to come together. So I'm going to skip the questions and turn it back over to you uh, and uh, appreciate, again, your time uh, with me uh, today so that we can discuss this very important issue. Yeah, thanks, Federico. That was a, a phenomenal walkthrough and specifically on, on several areas that I believe are, first of all, uh, essential for us in terms of uh, developing these capabilities and, and growing our ability to, to, to expand and, and um, improve in these areas, but also specifically in terms of how they complement uh, the work that we're doing here at SESME. Uh, just, just in that vein, uh, as you know, Federico, one of our core focus areas is around accelerating the democratization of smart manufacturing. And there's, yeah. there's two really key components to that. One is around uh, the complexity and cost factor, reducing cost and complexity yeah. of, of what it takes to use manufacturing data from real-time manufacturing sources on the shop floor and turn them into value. I think, I think largely it's been the Fortune 1000 that have been able to afford and have been able to use digital transformation technology in a significantly uh, valuable way. And, and the small medium manufacturing community has been left behind in many ways. And, and unless we do something fundamentally to change that trajectory, that gap, that digital divide will continue to grow. And so that's been at the core of the work that we're doing here, the innovation that uh, has, has been funded here through SESME around uh, sensors, controls, platforms, modeling, and of course through what we've called um, the Smart Manufacturing Innovation 
platform and of course the uh, information model standardization effort around smart manufacturing profiles. And I think that's the piece that gets me really excited um, uh, as I see what you're focused on and what you're working in terms of how complementary they are. Because as, as uh, we've all seen and as you directly alluded to, the, the challenges that began with the pandemic early, early last year, uh, but have continued to haunt us here in this country for a, a variety of different reasons. Those are issues that, that aren't going away in the short term. And I think uh, it's, it's essential for the kind of innovation and the kind of work that your organization does and that we do here at SESME to, to, to step in and provide some of the experience and the deep insights that collectively we can bring to this marketplace. Uh, there, there, there are some enormous challenges that have prevented the kinds of efforts that we know need to need to happen in this space. And, and, and I think understanding what those uh, constraints are, understanding the landscape, understanding the, the challenges is, is the best way to develop the, the right strategy going forward. You've done a phenomenal job with the with the, uh, some of the projects that you just highlighted around creating some of the some of the supply chain uh, anal uh, analysis and risk evaluation capabilities. From our perspective, what, what we bring to the table and what we've been working on with our supply chain um, team here at SESME, which consists of um, General Mills, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, Honeywell, ConAgra, and Raytheon, um, and, and a variety of uh, great vendor partners like Microsoft and uh, Think IQ and, and Savagent, uh, Symphony Industrial AI, um, is to work on the, the difficult challenge of how to bring real-time information from a supplier's manufacturing operation into the hands of the manufacturing organization that's actually in a position to do something with that data in real time. In other words, how do I understand as a manufacturer, how, how do I understand what the risk is of, of the product coming from my tier one and tier two suppliers, perhaps even tier three suppliers? What is the amount of inventory tied up in their operation, in their, in their warehouse? Um, so, so bringing a standard, standardized information models and a standardized infrastructure to the marketplace in a democratized fashion to enable that low cost, low complexity transfer of data in real time from their, from the manufacturing operation in my suppliers organization to the manufacturer so that we can enable the kinds of tools that you've just shared with us in real time would be uh, absolutely transformational for this country. In many ways, uh, Federico, Federico, as you and I have uh, talked about before, th there's a great analogy here between what um, the U.S. Congress did in 1956 when they funded the creation of the U.S. Interstate Highways and Defense Act, creating physical infrastructure to enable the flow of people and, and goods across this country. While what we need today more than almost anything else, arguably, at least in this domain, is the, the same sort of federally funded infrastructure that enables us to bring the flow of data in a secure and scalable, low cost, low complexity way to enable our manufacturers to become more competitive, and so, so I, I think as we've as we've uh, talked about having this conversation here at our Smart Manufacturing Summit 2021 event, Federico, um, I, I think you and I have, have collectively um, gained an appreciation for what the other organization is working on in this space, and the opportunity that this represents for us to collaborate. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I've seen the Smart in uh, smart uh, manufacturing innovation platform. I, I know you've talked about the smart manufacturing profiles, and they really do seem like a, a highly interesting set of ideas and technologies that are relevant to the work that we're doing here at MXD. So, you know, I think as you've said, when we've talked about how are ways that we can leverage these tools um, with our environment or with your membership, and, and you know, how do we um, continue to pushing forward to make sure that, as you say, we provide the tools that manufacturers need so that they can be equipped to, to face that fight. And right, as we said, data is available, things are available, but how do we bring it in a way that's going to be uh, agreeable, usable, um, and, and enable them to, to be 
quicker to respond and, and, and really pivot um, in a moment's need. Yeah, and with, with that, uh, Federico, I think, I think the environment that you have there, you, the, you, some of the imagery that you shared with, with our audience just now, and, and uh, of course I've been in your facility many times, you have, you have a world-class uh, demonstration, manufacturing demonstration environment, and, and um, I, I think the opportunity for us to demonstrate some of these capabilities collectively in your manufacturing demonstration facility would be just a, a, a fantastic way to bring our respective um, members up to speed on what these capabilities might look like and how collaboration and, and true enterprise operability that, that I think would be the outcome of this would, would be helpful for them. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's just a matter of right looking at what are the good use cases to start with and, and how do we kind of understand what are the outcomes we want and, and what are the people looking for. And yeah, I think we need to continue this discussion and really see, you know, how we can drive the, the impact that this country needs um, together in a way that's going to be meaningful and, and really provide some, some good opportunity for growth um, for both institutes, but also for, for the manufacturing writ large. Yeah, well said. And, and to do so, to, to bring these capabilities together, to, to, to um, demonstrate the value of information flowing from, from uh, some of the real, real manufacturing assets in your environment, um, on one hand, uh, using sort of low cost and low complexity um, information infrastructure, perhaps like a Raspberry Pi, to something, on the other hand, um, in parallel with, with other manufacturing assets, some, something that's more um, industrial scale and designed for a, a, a larger uh, manufacturing environment, both being secure, but obviously representing different ends of the spectrum in terms of maturity and in terms of cost and complexity. I think. I think those would, would represent uh, excellent ways for us to um, provide some level of relevant, practical use cases and, and, and actual uh, connectivity between the, the shop floor and the applications, both, both in the plant at the enterprise level and in the supply chain level to, to uh, share a, the art of what's possible for, for our manufacturing partners. Absolutely. So, sounds, sounds great to me. So uh, very excited and again, uh, very appreciative of, of the opportunity to be here speaking with you today on such an important issue. And uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, we got to continue this discussion and, and see how we can push this forward. Outstanding. Well, Federico, uh, thank you again. Uh, we appreciate your time and, and uh, look forward to, I'll, I'll speak to the audience for a moment, look forward to some of the some of the things that Federico and I have begun uh, talking about today with you here, look forward to seeing those materialize in the days to come. Thank you.